Hello Two Day Crew and welcome to Miriam. Miriam is a student from the Stig, which some people may have recalled. He's been on a few of the videos. We'll remain nameless, so you are the Stig student, Miriam. Okay. So, how has the Stig been treating you? What have you been doing? What's going on? Yeah, we had um, 12 sessions. Okay. And he's been brilliant. Okay. He's such a thorough instructor. Good. And I really like him. All right, yeah. lovely. Excellent. Yeah. So, um, you're at the point now where you've got an exam or a driving test coming up. Yeah. We're going to do the mock test, obviously, so you've yeah. got some feedback and you know how you are. Yeah. in order to be ready for the test. Yeah. Now, um, just before I go into the speech of the driving test, like the examiners normally tell you, is there anything on your mind, any questions, anything you're not sure about before we get started? No. No? no? Okay. No. All right, so the speech is you'll be driving for about 45 minutes, more or less. The new regulations are if a serious fault happens, the examiner may get you to drive back to the test centre. Okay. We're not doing that. We're going to do the whole experience, okay. what it used to be like pre Wuhan. Okay, so no matter what, pre Wuhan. Finish your test. Now, if the examiner chooses to, if you've committed a major, which is a serious or dangerous driver fault, mm -hmm. the examiner will probably get you to drive back. Okay? Yeah. Right, we'll be doing 20 minutes of independent drive. We'll be using the sat nav. We will be doing your reverse manoeuvre. And we will be, or may be doing a controlled stop. Okay. And that's the type of stuff you've practiced with Stig. Yes, yeah? we did. All right, good stuff. Well done, Stig. <laughs> okay, so the good marks for Miriam will be up here. The amber or advisory yellow driver faults will be up here. And then any serious or dangerous driver faults will be up here. Um, a like on the video will help me out tremendously. And let's go. Right, when you're ready, Miriam, drive on, please. Yeah. We'll do my observation first. Welcome to Two Day Pass and if you're new to the channel, an extra special thank you to you. If you like content like this and want to have the remedial action and all of that advice to help you and give you the tips and tricks that you need to pass your driving test first time, then this is the channel for you. Multiple camera angles to make you feel like the driver and a more engaging and entertaining kind of environment to learn. So don't forget to smash that like button that will help this video go out to more people. Sharp right, then turn around when possible. Please don't listen to the sat-nav for now, just continue to follow the road. Okay. I've nicknamed the sat-nav Gloria, and Gloria seems to be in a little bit of a rush to take us immediately back to the test centre, but we're not finished yet. Now it's important when doing your driving test to come across a junction like this. It has been referred to as the triangle, and it's where there's multiple junctions all joining together, and it looks quite confusing. So make sure you study this type of junction to avoid confusion on your driving hey, test. Miriam, what I'd like you to do is take the next road on the left, please. Okay. Shortly after you turn left, turn left again. So okay. left, left. Mm -hmm. It's practice time. And remember, perfect practice makes perfect. As you practice the wrong thing a million times, you'll get it wrong a million more. So here we have a driver fault for junctions turning left and it's about following these yellow lines and keeping the same distance. I call this following the curb. Now Miriam starts to stray from the yellow lines and into the center of the new road, and we can't see past the obstructions, the parked cars. Now Miriam has put herself in a tight spot. This is the worst case scenario, and she has to reverse with young pedestrians around her. This is a difficult situation to be in, yet Miriam does do good effective observations. Yet, we receive a driver fault here for junctions turning left. Had we followed the yellow lines, kept close to the curb, we would be in the position we can see now, which allows us to see further down into the road and see if there's any oncoming traffic before committing and going out into the centre of the road. This is a driver fault for junctions turning left. Hey Miriam, what I'd like you to try to do is find a safe place to pull over on the left somewhere on this road, please. Okay. Hitting or mounting the pavement may result in a serious driver fault and failing your driving test. So make sure you use reference points to judge your distance when pulling over to the left. Okay, thank you very much. Um, what we're going to do mm -hmm. is two things on this road. Okay. 
we'll start your manoeuvre, okay. and then afterwards we'll start the independent drive. But let's do one thing at a time. Uh -huh. So first things first, you see the silver vehicle in front? Yeah. What I'd like you to do is a reverse park exercise, commonly known as parallel parking. Okay. So I'm going to ask you to move out and stop parallel to the vehicle in front, roughly a metre in between you and, you and your vehicle. Mm -hmm. And then reverse park or parallel park within two car lengths and keep a reasonable distance from the curb when you finish. Okay. It's all right with the... With the what? With the uh, drive driveway. Oh yes, thank you very much. So yes, there is a bit of a driveway there. So yeah, if you if you stop a bit in front of the driveway, it's okay on this occasion. Thank right. you very much. <laughs> when studying to become a driving instructor, and pretty much my whole life in fact, I don't really listen to people, okay? I'm just coming clean with you. Now, I did many, many lessons, intensive lessons, and at the end of the lessons, I really didn't remember much at all. So when my instructor would refer back to me and say, at this junction or that road, this happened, do you remember? I would nod my head and just say, yeah, yeah, yeah. Not really knowing what went on. Now, to help me, the instructors were teaching me routines and you can actually see that Miriam is running through routines here. She's preparing the car, getting reverse gear first, then she's getting the steering sorted, this is all preparation, then observation, then move. This is called POM routine and that routine is what was taught to me yet I didn't listen and just gently nodded my head and said yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, if I had have listened and started practicing the routines, which later I did start to adapt and practice, which helped me learn immensely and structure the way that I moved and controlled the vehicle, it really, really helped. And then I started to get into routine and actually started to become a better driver and make my life easier. After practicing the routine many times, it just becomes normal and you don't even think about it. For the driving test, you will get a reverse maneuver of some kind. There are four main maneuvers, reverse parking, which we are doing here, forwards bay park, reverse bay park, and pulling over and stopping on the right. Now the requirements for the reverse bay park are within two car lengths. I tried to throw Miriam a lifeline here. Within two car lengths. Yeah. There's a... Yet she continues to reverse beyond the two car length limit and receives a serious driver fault. Yeah, I bet. Okay. okay, you finished? Yep. Okay, when actually we're going to start the independent drive. Mm -hmm. So, uh, oh, I think that's already set, so that's nice. Can you see that okay? Yeah. Yeah? yeah. Maybe move it a little bit better. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, so we're going to start your independent mm -hmm. drive. Yeah, sure. Just Let's get rid here. of that. Mm -hmm. So in a moment we'll drive on, and I want you to follow the sat nav. Now, okay. just before you drive on, I'm going to ask you a tell me question. Okay. Would you be able to tell me how would you check your foot brakes working before you start a journey? Okay. Um, I press it hard and then it shouldn't feel spongy or slack yet. Perfect. Thank you very much. And yeah. um, there's another bit that might be It shouldn't be pull to one side as yeah, well. Lovely. Yeah. Okay. So take your time. Drive on. Independent driving. Following the sat nav when you're ready. Good answer here from Miriam for her tell me question, giving the full detailed answer to her question. Now it's important to try and be over prepared for your driving test. This will make you feel more confident and give you the skills that you'll need to pass your driving test first time. So studying the show me tell me questions and reading up on material that we have from the DVSA can be very good so that you know the full answer and give a good impression to your driving test examiner. At the end of the road, turn left, Chamberlain Way, then turn right. At the end of the road, we have another one of those triangle junctions we talked about earlier. It's important to read the road and study the information that we can see, like road markings. Turn left, then turn right. Here we have plenty of information painted on top of the road surface and it's important that we know our road markings and then we won't be confused thinking it's a roundabout. Now Miriam's pulled in here and received a driver fault. Why did she pull in? There's no oncoming traffic and the visibility is fair. 
She's pulling in again, and the vehicle in front is signalling to turn. So if we act on the information accordingly, we'll make a more informative decision, and Miriam is slowing the progress of the vehicle behind, and receives a driver force. Turn right, Catlin's lane. Sorry about that. Okay, so Miriam, don't listen to the sat-nav anymore, please. Okay. I'll give you directions. Mm -hmm. Just follow the road ahead for now. Mm -hmm. Miriam has now driven past the last direction that the sat-nav has given. Don't panic if this happens to you on your driving test. Remain calm and carry on. Listen to your examiner as they may give you new directions and ask you to disregard the sat-nav. And at the end of the road, turn right, please. At the end of the road, turn right. Okay. On my driving test, I missed my direction. In fact, I went round the roundabout three times. Yes, the same roundabout. It was a bit of a interesting driving test we'll say that um however i passed because safety is more important than direction now if you're not sure and you're in a safe environment not like me going round a roundabout three times getting a little bit dizzy um you can ask your driving examiner for direction now had i'd asked my examiner going round a roundabout probably not a good idea. So make sure you ask in good time and in a safe environment and your examiner may help you with new directions. Okay, so the sat nav's reprogrammed. We did miss one of the directions, but that's okay, okay yeah? Okay. So I'd like you to resume your independent drive and follow the sat nav again, please. Okay. Thank you. In the current climate that we're in, finding a driving test booking can prove to be very difficult as I'm being told that there's next to no dates available even up until 2022. So for your chance to win a free driving test booking to get you a test within two to three weeks time, all you need to do to enter is subscribe and write down in the comments below free driving test. That's it guys, to win a free driving test booking, subscribe, write down in the comments below, free driving test, and when we reach our next thousand benchmark for subscribers, a winner will be chosen at random live on the channel. Good luck. After 200 yards, turn left, Gina Street, then take the second left. Each white line on our left shows us the next road on the left. We've been told to take the next road on the left and then the second road on the left. Turn left, then take the second left. Looking for lanes, lines and signs is vital to awareness and planning, and Merriam stops in confusion, blocking the junction, and receives a serious driver fault for awareness and planning. Here. Do what's safest, please. Here, sorry. Sorry about that. It's a bit too late to be asking directions yeah. when you're stopped yeah. in the middle of a junction. Yeah. Yeah, it's not safe for me to tell you where to go at that point. The examiners will say the Turn same thing. When possible. Okay, yeah. so we're having a bit of confusion with the sat nav, okay? Okay. So do me a favor, just yeah. ignore the sat nav. Okay. I'm going to give you directions, uh -huh. okay? Yeah. While we're being a little bit serious, I just want to say thank you so much to everybody that supported me while I've been making this growth on YouTube. I really appreciate your support and thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay, Miriam, keep going up to the top. You see there's a bend coming up here. Yeah. I want you to pull over into the left side of this bend. There's a large area, a large open area on the left. Okay. If you just come in and face that white vehicle for me and just stop facing the white vehicle. Do you see the white vehicle? There. Okay. Just come up to it and face it for me. So point diagonal, face. face. Like this? Yep, so you're facing it. Okay. Stop here for me. Uh -huh. Thank you. Do you know how to put the car into park? It's good yeah. car. Good. All right. Um, we've gone off track. So okay. what I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to silence the sat nav. Okay. Because it's probably going to talk quite a lot of rubbish, basically. Okay. okay? Mm -hmm. So for now, I'll silence it. We okay. may resume it again when we get back on course. Okay. So okay. we might resume that a bit later. Okay. So just while we're parked up here. Um, how has the practice been with the TomTom? -tom? Have you used it before? The one here uh, that we're using? No. Okay, so this is the same one that will be used on the real driving test. So okay. that's why we're using that one and not the one on the car, which is actually okay. probably a bit easier to see. And that one's quite dull, isn't it? It's hard to see it yeah, sometimes. Yeah. If you can hear the instructions, the lady said, take the left, 
then take the second road on the left. So it what did. happened is you went left, left. and then and went, then left straight away. Yeah, and this is on the test. This is the sat nav tells you this: turn okay. left and take the second road on the left. Okay. A lot of people do what you did. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you're not alone. But we need to listen sometimes because we okay. can't see it maybe it's good if we can but it is a bit dull so the sun can block it out it's very hard okay. to see um and if we hear the instructions can be good if you're still not sure if you're in a safe place not in a junction you can, you can ask. ask all right okay what we're going to do now miriam is mm -hmm. to get back out i'm going to ask you to actually do a u-turn here yeah. okay no so there's quite a lot of room as long as we apply full steering, or yep. what's referred to as full lock, yep. and it's safe, yep. I'd like you to do a U-turn, please. No Okay, it's not going to make it. That's okay. fine. Okay. Normally it would yeah. if that car wasn't there, uh, yeah. If it's safe, we'll reverse, yeah. yeah. Okay, and then if you just drive on when you're ready and I'll give you directions. Thank you, yeah. Here comes the rain. It doesn't look like it'd be too bad though. One of the stages on your driving test is to pull over and stop on the left and allow roughly one car length distance from the next parked vehicle. On this occasion, your examiner may ask you to disregard the driveways. Hey Miriam, if you can find a place to pull up on the left for me, that would be okay. brilliant. So anywhere along the road. Uh, give yourself enough room to drive off again. So keep edging up until about a car limp from okay. that vehicle. This will be fine, just up us here. Thank you. Yeah. All right, this is all part of the test. The examiners yeah. will ask people when they're on the driving test to stop and leave about a car limp. So, yeah. even though actually we shouldn't stop in well, front of cars, it will make it tighter. But yeah, it we didn't be. have a chance yet. If the vehicles can pass through. Well, fine. It's all good. Yeah. When you're ready, drive on, and at the end of the road, turn left, please. Okay. In fact, Miriam, mm -hmm. would you put it back into park? Yeah. Let's see what the sat nav tells us. Any lights coming on? I can't see it properly. No. no. Okay, it should come on yeah, now. Yeah. All yeah. right, let's see. And then it probably talks some rubbish. This is what I was afraid of. But it says like okay, um, maybe it's still looking. Yeah. So what's going to happen is when you drive on, it will start to give you directions again. Okay. So let's see if we can continue with the independent with the drive. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So when you're ready, just follow the sat nav, please. Be more like Miriam as she's listened closely to her Stiggy, and not be like me where I basically had cotton wool in my ears, where I wanted to take the cotton wool out my ears and stick it in my mouth, really. Um, I still have a habit of talking too much, don't I? Anyways, Miriam's done her routine listening to Stiggy and the POM, POM routine, standing for prepare, get in your gear, applying the signal if you feel it benefits, make effective observations, and then knowing it's safe before moving off. At the end of the road, turn left, China Street, then turn left. Turn left, then turn left. Cheen Street is a very narrow road, similar to a country lane, and this is the road we're turning left onto now. As you can see, there are no pavements for the pedestrians, and there are concealed entrances on the left and right that pedestrians may walk out from. Be aware of the size of your vehicle, and if you feel like the road is too narrow to continue, you must slow down. After 200 yards, turn left, Barnhill. The cobblestone chicane on the left may be safe and necessary to drive on if we have a large oncoming vehicle. As you can see, this road is quite narrow and here by the railing creates a pinch. 
If you have an oncoming vehicle, less space means less speed. Slow down and reevaluate your position in the road, making sure that you have a safe margin on both sides of your vehicle. After we have turned into this road on the left, there will be a blind spot coming up. It almost looks like the road comes to an end, but it's not. It's just a bend. Always anticipate another vehicle oncoming and make sure that you keep your vehicle in a safe position, roughly one meter from the left. Here, we drive into the center of the road. And if there was an oncoming vehicle, this would be dangerous. Merriam receives a driver fault for positioning, normal driving. This means keeping to the left. At the end of the road, turn right, Bridal Road. Can I share a secret? You promise not to tell? Okay. So when I was learning to drive, I went through many different instructors. Finally, I found the right one for me, and his name was Lawrence. Now, Lawrence had a way about him where he could just make the most complicated of ideas and questions from the student, i.e. myself, into the most simplistic and easiest way to understand. And when I was here at this situation, emerging out onto main roads, I never knew if I had gone too early or waited too long. And Lawrence said, would you walk out? That was it, the light bulb moment where I knew the safest moments at any junction to drive out. So Miriam has been waiting here for a little while. And I think she's starting to feel anxious, like she's missed an opportunity to go. Sometimes we may just be waiting as the road is super busy and just keep looking for that opportunity where you would walk out. Here, Miriam starts to push out and there is a vehicle coming from the most dangerous side. And you can see here that the vehicle was quite close to us. This vehicle had to slow down to avoid an accident and Miriam receives a serious, sorry, dangerous, sorry Miriam, dangerous <laughs> driver fault for junctions turning right. After 300 yards, go left on the roundabout and take the first exit, Field Dent Road. Earlier we covered the POM routine that's from moving away after you pull over to park up on the left. That stands for prepare, observe and move. There's one more routine that we use for junctions. I'll tell you in just a sec. Go left on the roundabout and take the first exit. Okay, Gloria. Now, back to the routine. The routine we use for junctions, the one that I never used to listen to, and then finally I did, and that's where I really started to make progress with my learning, is mirrors, signal, position, speed, look. You might know this as MSPSL routine. You've most likely run through this routine and been taught by your driving instructor. This is really helpful as when you approach a junction or you've been given some kind of direction either by your instructor, examiner or your sat nav, you will immediately go into a response of mirrors, signal, position, speed, look. And this will really structure every single junction you come to to make sure that you're always following the routine and meeting the standards required of you for your driving test. I'm going straight here. Just follow the sat nav. So can you see the blue line on the sat nav? Yeah. Yeah, so I think it's going straight. It's very difficult for me to see it. I haven't heard the sat-nav say anything. At the top of the sat-nav is a banner, and the banner tells you where your next turn is and how far it is. Okay. So that can be a useful tool to use to plan ahead. Okay. Okay. It says left. Mm. Sometimes it even gives you the name of the road. 
With the sat nav, we have a couple of different parts that are giving us information. At the top, we have the banner that shows you the name, distance, and direction of the next junction. Yeah, it says field and the road. Also, on the map, you will see a blue line, which is the route that you need to follow. So if you weren't doing a mock test video for YouTube, what would you normally be doing today, Miriam? Uh, looking after my kids. Oh, that's yeah. nice. Should I be cooking dinner again? Excuse me? <laughs> I should be cooking dinner for them. Oh, all right. <laughs> so, it's okay, yeah. got a day I'm off today. Bit, yeah. Exactly. Miriam does a good job here of not blocking the side road like the white car in front. This allows space for the main road to turn in and it can be quite considerate to allow one of the cars on the side road to emerge out. This is important as we can get a serious fault if we block the side road. After 200 yards, turn left, field and road. Then, at the end of the road, turn left. All right, Miriam, while we're moving very slowly in this traffic, mm -hmm. if it's safe, or when it's safe, mm -hmm. I'd like you to show me how you would wash the rear window. The rear window, I just mm. pressed this one. Nice one. Yeah. Good. This dig strained you well. <laughs> it is good. Yeah, that's it's a very difficult good. one. Yeah. I need to thank you, actually, for recommending him. Yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. Because when I called you, you said you're busy on the 27th, you can't do my, you can't yeah, think we I... with me on the, on the test. And then I asked you if you can recommend anyone, and you did recommend him and okay. sent me his number. Mr. Yeah. Stiggy. Yeah, he's really good, yeah. Because I did some sessions on a manual car before, but I felt that it's not for me. And you just confirmed it with your videos. When I watched your videos, I said, oh, it can be a lot easier and a lot more convenient and safer as well. If you are driving an automatic. That's my opinion, yeah. yeah. Some people would disagree with me. Everybody's different though, aren't they? You know, yeah, so I, yeah. I get it. Some it's people, fine. they like the old fashioned way. Yeah, it's up to them. God damn it, Scott. Can you just stop bashing manual cars and shut up? After 80 yards, Turn left, field and road. Then, at the end of the road, turn left. Left and then left. We'll keep it clear. There was an announcement today from the government that from 2030... Boring. ...no new petrol or diesel cars will be sold. Nobody cares. Oh, only hybrid and electric. <laughs> Not even a hybrid, I guess, because they would be petrol. They would be diesel. petrol as well, yeah. So it would be strictly electric. Shut up. Wow. So if anybody is thinking turn about left, field and road, the future, at the end of the he road, should be getting left. an electric and right. should be learning an automatic. I don't know about should, but it's definitely coming. You know, yeah. the government are making very big. Yeah. Like that. The waste of the batteries. Yeah. Like yeah. This is a good chance to look at the tom tom. Thank God that's over. Yeah, so if we're stuck at a traffic light or stuck in traffic, you're right. It's a yeah, good time to sort to, of. To, you know, familiarize yourself with your surroundings as well. Mm -hmm. At the traffic light, the sat nav will give us directions to turn left and then turn right. This is an immediate turn just after the traffic lights. Turn left, field and road, then turn right. After the set of traffic lights, we will be turning immediately right into the car park. This car park has a very narrow entrance and is quite hard to identify. There will be a sign with a blue square with a white P inside and an arrow pointing towards the entrance to the car park. This can be used to easily identify the entrance. Turn right, Elm Avenue. Car park here. Turning into a narrow road, decrease your speed to increase your visibility and this will give you more time to react. Is this the swimming pool car park? No. Yeah. This is a new one for me. Okay. That's why I wanted <laughs> you to go in here. We've already yeah. done your manoeuvre but for anybody that's taken the driving test at Pinup, new car park.
And there we right. go. Beautiful. Look at that. Yeah. Okay. I love it. It's right. Really nice. What we'll do okay. is I'll ask you to slowly stop here in the middle of the road. Okay. I'm just anywhere. There's no one behind us, so I'm just okay. anywhere here is fine. Uh -huh. You see this stretch here? We might as well use this place. It's reasonably safe. What I'm going to ask you to do is on this little stretch here, I'll put my hand up and say stop. Okay. So this will be your emergency stop exercise. So you yeah. can get your manoeuvre and an emergency stop in a real test. So that's the scenario that we're recreating now. Okay. Have you done an emergency stop or controlled stop before? Yeah, it's the same. Yeah, okay? we've done. Right, so my signal to you would be my hand up and the word stop. When you okay. hear that, I'd like you to do your controlled stop. Mm -hmm. Okay? Yeah. When you're ready and it's safe, drive on, please, and just follow the road straight ahead. Okay. Just in case. Yes. Good practice. Yeah. Turn right, then, at the end of the road... Turn right. Stop. Thank you. Now, when you're ready, I'd like you to drive on. Mm -hmm. And I just want you to do a U-turn around that pole in the bin. You see this rubbish okay. bin yeah. here? Just go around here. Okay. I'm not too concerned if you step on or go over any of the white lines. Okay. Because we're not going to cause any damage. And you probably need to in order to actually maneuver the I car so, through yeah. here. Yeah? yeah. So when you're ready, if you just drive on, if it's safe, and then just go around that pole for me, please. Okay. We're going to exit the car park. Well, I'm not going to do... Um, for the bay parking. No, you've yeah. done your manoeuvre, so okay. you've completed that part of the exam. Okay. That stinks job. <laughs> no, we've Turn done it right. same time. All right, lovely. And then just exit the um, car park. Yeah, I always have difficulty trying to say that car park. <laughs> That would be... Yeah, so it's right. going to be a very narrow... You know, these car parks, I think they're chosen on purpose, seriously, because the entrances to these car parks can be very restricted. Yeah. Just in case someone is After 80 yards, turn left, north view. Turn left. Gloria the Satnav has just given us directions to turn left, so when emerging out of the car park, what lane do we need to move into? The vehicles in the left lane are waiting for the traffic light, and Merriam believes them to be a parked car, and moves around and into the right hand lane for right turns only. We'll come back to that later. Now Merriam presses up way too close for her positions, normal stops, where we need to leave at least tyres and tarmac in the case of an emergency where the vehicle may roll back, if you're in a manual car, or if you need to go around a broken down vehicle. And then straight. Excellent job by Miriam clarifying the direction, showing the examiner that she knows where she needs to follow next. However, Miriam is in a right only lane. So, pop quiz. Do we A, ignore the road markings and continue to follow the road ahead, or B, obey the road markings and turn right at the crossroads. So if you answered B, you would be correct. Here, however, Merriam ignores the road markings and continues to follow the road ahead. She will receive a serious driver fault for doing this on a driving test under response to road markings. So if hindsight, watching material like this and getting tips and tricks for your driving test, you'll be able to save yourself time and money. And know that if you are in a right-only lane, you must obey the road markings, despite where the sat-nav, driving examiner or instructor, if you're on your driving lessons, has asked you to go. This shows the examiner, when you're on your driving test, that you have seen the information and acted accordingly like a responsible, safe road user. And ultimately, remember, safety is more important than direction. Could be a little bit closer, but because he's carrying those things. 
Thank you. You just reminded me of a driver thought I would have forgotten about. Oh, really? <laughs> Should have kept quiet. Yep. <laughs> Because usually I'll stop a bit closer until I can see it just a little bit. Okay, straight. Listening to Miriam, it sounds like she's a little bit confused. What's the correct distance that you'll need to stop from the vehicle in front? If you've been doing driving lessons, you may have heard your driving instructor refer to this as tyres and tarmac. And what tyres and tarmac means is when you're stopping from the vehicle in front, you can see the tyres clearly and also some of the road surface between your vehicle and the vehicle in front. This is made from tarmac, hence the rhyme tyres and tarmac. When you're following and stopping behind a larger vehicle, you may notice a warning sticker on the back that says, if you can't see my mirrors, I can't see you. This will not only be a good position for stopping so that the driver can see you more clearly, but for you to see the road around that vehicle ahead more clearly. After 300 yards, turn right, west way, then turn right. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls that should not be driving, you're about to hear the announcement to driver fault of the year 2021 and it's called the banana. How you do this is find yourself in a right only lane, proceed to step over the road marking into the left lane and then banana back into your right only lane. And if you do this driver fault correctly, any filtering traffic like motorbikes or bicycles will most surely go banana splat. This is an unconscious driver fault and you will require an experienced and professional driving instructor to correct you on this driver fault as and when it happens. After 90 yards, turn left, man away, then turn around when possible. Please ignore that last direction. I'd okay. like you just to continue to follow the road ahead. Turn okay. left, then turn around when possible. Okay, so that will be the end of your independent driving. For the okay. remainder of, remaining time of the test, mm -hmm. I'm going to give you directions. No okay. Yeah. Thank you. And just follow the road ahead. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm going to be a little bit mean. I'm just going to ask you to read and follow one sign here, okay? Mm -hmm. So let's see if Stiggy's done some sign work with you. Mm -hmm. Does it look like Stiggy's done any sat-nav with you? Or if he has, it's probably the car sat-nav, okay? Follow that to Pinner, please. Okay. shouldn't say this on camera but I'm gonna say it anyways oh my god not again thank you to the borough that Pinner's in for actually putting an appropriate size circle on the mini roundabout so people aren't forced to drive on it they've changed the road markings there it's brand new that circle was like that big you know it's good because then the space for people to yeah. use the road go yeah. around. Oh if you make it small it's easier for you to go around it Ahead, we have two roundabouts. Mm -hmm. At the first one, turn left. Okay. And when you reach the second roundabout, mm -hmm. 
to make my mind up. Turn left again, please. Okay, no I want to show you a road. I wasn't going no, to, but I'm going to. I used the blocker. Yes. Um, so this road, it, mm, you may not have done this one with, with Stig yet. So I'll show you this road. It's okay. just nice to, to know about, okay? Yeah. Especially with you having your exam coming up shortly, yeah. so. Yeah. Okay, let's go here before this one comes. Okay, Mariam, you may see a zebra crossing coming up. Just after the zebra crossing, turn right. It is the next road on the right. Not this one. Next, like your next door neighbour. So where does your next door neighbour live? Is it two houses down or is it right next door to you? Right there. Oh, we missed it. You've missed two. <laughs> it's all right, don't worry, just keep following the road ahead, okay? okay? Obviously it wasn't meant to be. We haven't done that one yet. Yeah, it's... um. An interesting road, definitely worth checking out if anybody's we in can't, the area. We can't turn here. <laughs> back again. Uh, no, no, no. all of these roads are dead ends now. So oh, can yeah. you see the signs? Okay. They're, they've got those blue squares with the T's in them. That yeah. Shows yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I could see them. Yeah. So, yeah. so yeah. we're just going to go up to the test centre now. No problem. It's all right, this road's quite good as well to okay. show you. It's what I call the tunnel. You probably are aware Oh, of yeah. That. I so know the tunnel. <laughs> instead of going up the tunnel, you'll be going down, down. the tunnel. Okay. 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 So just go straight in there. Mm -hmm. Okay, so there's another zebra crossing. You mm -hmm. see that in the distance? Yeah. Flashing Felicia yep. beacons. Yep. Now, just after that zebra crossing is a road on the right. Okay. I'd like you to take the next road on the right, please. Okay. Sorry. So, where Tesco is? After that, or where Tesco is? Can you see the zebra crossing? Yeah, I can. So, remember I said the next road on the right is just after the zebra crossing? Okay. So why are you asking me where it is? <laughs> you said where it is. Just confirm. Oh, uh, don't worry. The sarcasm is going to be more present in more videos. <laughs> it's coming. Don't worry. Okay. So you can call me out on the sarcasm. I got raised with sarcasm. I'm probably the most sarcastic person if I want to be in the world. But uh, sometimes I think it's relevant. So if it's not, please just tell me I'm being rude in the comments. And I'll stop. So what do you think about the timing on the signal then? No, not yeah, here. Sorry. Too early, yeah, isn't it? yeah. Not where I turn in there. No. Too early, definitely. It's that time of the day where we both sit down and look into each other's eyes and talk about that mock test video that we saw earlier and how amazing it was and how much time and effort that must have been put into to make such a masterpiece. And forget. We didn't like it. Well, if you've got a couple of seconds, so just go ahead and tickle that like button and find out it doesn't laugh. However, what it does do is it helps me out immensely and I'd really appreciate it if you could spend two seconds to tell Merriam where the next road on the right is. Do you remember the directions? The next one. So there's a crossing behind us and the Tesco and the SO that you said about here. Okay. The next one or your next door neighbour. So. I think I, I can still do it. If it's safe, yeah. 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 And this is the tunnel. The reason why I call this type of situation a tunnel is because we have a row of parked cars on the left hand side and the right hand side of the road. 
with not many gaps in between the parked vehicles to pass any oncoming traffic. This is referred to as a meeting situation. In this event, we must make extra observations to the opposite side of the tunnel for any oncoming traffic and be ready to slow down and stop. Here we need to position slower and closer to the left side in the event of any oncoming traffic coming around the blind bend. This is recorded as a driver fault for positioning normal driving. Come here, I'd like to pull over in a convenient place on the left, please. When pulling over to stop on the left, reduce your speed gradually and take a long, smooth angle towards the pavement, similar to an aeroplane landing at an airport. And then drive on when you're ready. And do me a favour, would you take the next road on the right, please? The mock test may have come full circle, but Miriam knows the test is not over until she's asked to switch the engine off. She's back to basics and focusing on her POM routine and making effective observations and seeing the overtaking traffic. She uses the double blind spot technique and looking into the most dangerous blind spot moments before moving off, ensuring it's safe to do so. Remember this junction? The examiners call it a triangle and studying the road markings and acting on the information you see will ensure that you understand the junction fully and don't confuse it with a roundabout. Applying the routine of mirrors, signal, position, speed, look, Miriam has a good structured foundation to approaching this right turn. She notices the traffic that needs to emerge from this narrow road and stops in a position allowing space for it to exit this side road. Leaving room for Miriam to then enter after that vehicle has exited and therefore completing the junction in a safe and effective manner. Okay, Miriam, and then I'd just like to find another convenient place to put up on the left. Mm -hmm. All right, lovely. And, um... I think we'll be all right if we switch the engine off. I don't think it's too hot. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. And uh, we know the test's over when the engine switched off. So that's the end of your test. How do you yep. feel? How do you feel it went? Uh, I messed up with the with the directions a lot. Okay. Um, yeah. How so? What was the? What do you believe the mess up was then? Like I turned left when I had to turn right and things like that. So okay, I did not so follow the the sat nav properly. Some confusion then yeah. with directions. Yeah. This yeah. is totally normal. Okay, I went round and round about on my test three times. Okay. And one of the turns yeah. where the instructor, sorry, examiner told me to turn right, it's like the triangle you just did. Okay. I did the one after. You know how you kept thinking the next one was, yeah. not the first one, but yeah. the one after? Yeah. It's maybe a poor choice of words, I'm not sure, but the next one means literally the next one, yeah. right? Your yeah, next yeah, door yeah. neighbour, yeah, okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you will Science hear the examiner does. give you directions in this way. So okay. This this way that I speak, and most guys yeah. you see on YouTube, we're doing it because it's how the instructor, so the examiners say it, yeah. would say it, okay? Yeah. Uh, anything else that you're worried about? Uh... I think I will leave it to you now. I, I you like briefly. that, yeah. <laughs> See, I look at Miriam in the eye and she's looking at me like, Yeah. tell me something. You have, yeah, <laughs> you have things to tell me. Just go ahead and briefly. Okay, all right. So, would you like me to go over the results for you? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Miriam, on this occasion, What's... I'm sorry, but you yeah. haven't passed, yeah. okay? Yeah. Um, would you like me to tell you why? Yeah, of course. Yeah, okay. Yeah. All right, so... Um, We've got a few driver faults. Immediately, everybody usually wants to know about the serious or dangerous driver yeah. faults as they're usually regarded as slightly more important, obviously. Okay. Because for anybody that's not too sure, we do receive one serious or dangerous driver fault, kind of referred to as major faults. So a lot of people online will call them minor and major, but okay, driver fault to driver fault. Serious and dangerous is something completely different, okay? Mm -hmm. So serious or dangerous driver faults, there's one, 
two, three, four. Okay. Oh. Just double check so I make okay. I, just make sure I get it right. I've made mistakes in the past. Mm -hmm. One, two, three, four. And they're all marked in these small boxes here. Okay. okay? Mm -hmm. So just for anybody that's looking in there, they might think, what the hell are these guys looking at? This mm -hmm. is the test sheet. The S and D columns are the serious <coughs> and dangerous columns. Okay? Right. So um, I'll go over all the driver faults with you. So okay. um, we got the four serious, dangerous driver faults. Okay. There was... Too serious, too dangerous, total of four. And with the driver faults themselves, or advisory driver faults, I like to call them advisory driver faults. Mm -hmm. uh, shout out to Drive London if he's watching. He's, he said advisory driver faults. I think that's quite nice. Okay. okay. So we've got one. Uh, oh, sorry. I stand corrected. Actually, see, that's why I like to triple check. I missed that one. So there's actually three serious driver faults, two dangerous. Okay, we'll come back to that. But the minor driver faults, we've got one, two, three, four, five. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, sorry. See, I have to always triple, triple check everything. Okay, right, so I'm going to go over them in order. So number one, we had a left turn. You came, it was this road actually so we turned left it's your first left turn mm -hmm. where the triangle is yeah. and we turn left again mm -hmm. as you've come round onto this road because of the obstruction with parked vehicles mm -hmm. we haven't got a very good view of the road ahead yeah and you've come out out into the middle straight away it's putting you in a very awkward position okay. so when you turn left follow curb so okay. you see the curb that comes yeah, yeah. around, follow it. What that's going to do, if you follow the curve, when you come out of a road, you follow it, there's a parked vehicle here, you'll be slightly behind it, but you'll still be able to see around it to see if there's any oncoming traffic. Well, what's happened is you're coming out and going straight into the middle. So then you had to reverse. If you followed the curve... Oh, I see, I would have stopped here instead of reversing. Yeah, I had to reverse there. Because then you'll be in the position where you're anticipating an oncoming vehicle. You're giving yourself the best position to stop in if there's a, ne a need for it. Okay. Yeah, because you can now see as you come slowly into the road, following the curve, see the vehicle, stop, still space for the vehicle to pass. You yeah. can see, you can then move out and keep going. Yeah. You put yourself in a tight spot with coming straight out into the middle and then going, is there anyone there? Yeah, really I think I, I was worried about the other side, so I was like, yeah, but uh, that was wrong anyway, so. Yeah, yeah it's just I a question of that. your, your yeah. how you're turning left, so follow the curve. Yeah. Yeah, it's going to mm -hmm. put you in the best position. Yeah. Okay, moving on, number two, number two, number that two, number two. Behind. This yeah. one. So move off safely. So after you did your reverse, uh, sorry, your turn left and you had to reverse, mm -hmm. you, you started reversing, you were looking around and stuff. And then what it was, was when you went to move off after you did your reverse. I didn't look. Well, you were still in reverse gear. Oh, yeah. And then I, I, and I noticed. And you not really look. Yeah, you noticed yeah. quickly and stopped it and then got going again. So you might have gone about that far. You did do reasonably good observations on your reverse bit and stuff. Okay. So you're making an effort. It's just an accident that you were still in reverse when you went to move yeah. off. So I put that down as a driver fault for just, you know, not really wanting to do that. Did you, you want mm -hmm. to go forward? So yeah. it's like a move off safely. I could put it down as control if you like. Okay. It's probably more suitable in control, really, because it's a control issue. Mm -hmm. Okay, but that's the driver fault there, okay? Okay. Moving into number three, we have signals timed. So, uh, oh, no. Yeah. Uh, with the, oh, sorry, no, this is, sorry, it's so close to that one. That's number 10. Number three is, uh, you know when we did our reverse park exercise yeah. on this road? Yeah. And uh, you did a very good job, right? So nice observations, really good reference points, you know, looking around the whole time you're through the manoeuvre. And then you got to the point where you were within two car lengths. That's okay. where I tried to throw you a lifeline. And I said, within two car lengths. And there's a pet peeve I've got. So for anybody, again, you can put down in the comments SUV if I'm a meanie. cars, I think. Hmm? The size of an SUV, that's enough, no? <laughs> that's what I thought. I have to think about it. You see, the cars, are they come in different shapes and yeah. sizes. So 
so if it's it to the car be. length, it's four. So usually they are four meters thirty yeah, or something. Yeah. So if we can, I think within two car lengths. No? Within. How many car spaces did you see in front of you, or how much distance did you? If you're it good was with like numbers, nine meters. It could was you put about... two cars in front of you, if they squeezed in, maybe, or with the space that you had? <laughs> was there two empty spaces in front of you between? Not you and really. The... I should have. I should have made more space. Actually, you made too much space. You think so? So when I was on my my lessons. Uh -huh. At the end of a four-hour lesson, because I was doing intensive lessons, I didn't remember much. Okay. So when this happened to me at the end of the test, I was kind of like, yeah, <laughs> I have no idea what you're talking about, where that happened, what happened, and I walked away with a headache pretty much. But okay. when it's written down and explained to us, it might help. And obviously, you're going to have a video, so yeah, you're going to be yeah. able to look back and go... I remember that yeah, now. Yeah. And that's going to help. I shouldn't have you. done that. Yeah. So, what happened is you actually received a serious driver fault for the control or under control because you came back three car lengths. There was two empty spaces in front of you, enough room to put two cars. We've got to park within. Within. Okay. You went out. Out. Out, out to the two so car lengths. So, try to okay. throw you a lifeline, and okay, I said within. within. So, that's okay. the test requirements. Right. Your distance was yeah, decent. Yeah. You were a good position. You just came back too far. Yeah. That's and all. that's serious. Well, it can be. Hadja, are you watching? <laughs> <laughs> Put it down in the comments below, please. Okay. Um, yes, because the requirements are two car lengths. So, if you go more than okay. two car lengths... It's not in the requirements. It's like okay. parking in a bay. If we don't park within the bay markings, yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's a fail. Yeah, yeah serious. Okay. Okay. Comments, Moving yeah. on. Uh, number four, meeting situation. So you came. Which which road was this? I'm not too sure which road this was now. So we came down here. Oh yeah, it's the next one, wasn't it? And we turned left here at the end of the road. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, as you went down this road, you had a car coming towards you, but that car was like beyond the van in front of us, mm -hmm. and you wanted to pull into this space. Then you went out. Then you pulled into that space, and then the van, the other guy, stopped for you, anyways. And then you went around and back out. So you're going in, out, in, out, in, out. Okay. There's a car behind you. Yeah. There's only one oncoming vehicle, and there's two of you. Yeah, I'm so, not saying that you have priority because there's two of you, but it's more likely that an oncoming vehicle may stop because they won't be able to get past you. And them. And them. Yeah. And that's what happened. And we all squeezed past each other. So this is sort of uh, a, a driver fault, yeah? Okay. Advisory driver fault for meeting. Mm -hmm. Okay, because so, you could have just kept going, really. Okay. And you had option A, option B. So you moved into option A, then you went round to option B, okay. then you had to keep going. So it's all a question of how fast is that vehicle going. Okay, was it hesitating? So, yes, yeah, so if the vehicle that's oncoming is going at an increased speed, it's more likely we'll have to decrease speed okay. and, and maybe, maybe make space yeah, and stop yeah. and let them pass. Mm -hmm. If they are maintaining speed or slowing, there's an increased chance that they will stop for you. For us, yeah. So look at the speed. You see like this white car? No yeah. way that's going to stop. It's yeah. too fast. Yeah. Move in. Stop. Okay. Or, oh, they're going really slow. Let me keep going. See what happens. Okay. Oh, they're stopping. Or you might even see them change direction start to move in. Yeah. These are the clues you need to look for. Everybody look for the speed of the vehicle. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Moving on, so where are we? Like thank you. Right, so positioning normal driving. Um, this is six and eleven. So this is the six and eleven driver fault for the same reason. Okay. Position normal driving. Does that mean anything whatsoever to you? It's left. Good. All right. Well done. Because even though I'm a driving instructor. It's kind of a little bit ambiguous. So there is a, a, a an explanation for these things, and I'll try to give you that at the end, so if you're not too sure. Yeah. So excellent. You seem to know, being on the left. Mm -hmm. Now, what's happening is when you're getting a right bend, mm -hmm. a blind right bend, that means okay. you can't see if there's an oncoming yeah. vehicle. Mm -hmm. We're driving around that bend in the middle of the road. 
Where's the danger going to come from? From the right. And where will the danger be when you enter into that bend? It would be in front of me. Yeah. yeah. So what's the safest position to be yeah, in? Yeah, I try like to go on the left, Very but good. maybe I didn't do this time. <laughs> Can I give you a tip for increasing yeah, of your accuracy or control? Yeah. Slow down. Slow down as you go into a blind bend. Okay. The emergency services call them vanishing points. That mm -hmm. means you can't see what's happening. It's just an end to the road. Yeah. It yeah, might be a very true. tight bend. So if a, a response driver sees a vanishing point, they're trained to decrease their speed because yeah. that vanishing point approaches them. Yeah. As it approaches and they see that, they decrease in speed. And they need to because they can't fly around that bend. Okay. They'll probably lose control of the vehicle. Yeah. But more importantly, if someone's driving in the middle of the road, they're a dangerous driver. Yeah. And someone's like, oh, you know, chaos. No, but, yeah. And now I have had that accident. situation happen to me many times where I have, hand on heart, actually been positioned on the left. And thank God I was, yeah. because if I wasn't, me and my cousin will probably be dead because the French guy came around. Yeah, French man. Yeah, so any French poop. And I'm just joking, <laughs> all right? Just this guy. He was coming too fast. He was breezing round about 40 miles an hour around the bend right in the middle of the road. And there's me sticking to the left, thank God, in a foreign country. Sorry, sticking to the right okay. in a foreign country. And he passed us. But could have been a lot worse. Yeah. Yeah, right, true. so that position is very important. Now... On a side note, mm -hmm. I've had this discussion with other driving instructors, so um, if somebody doesn't agree with me, please put it down in the comments below. Don't try and send internal emails, etc. Okay? Everybody is different. Me, other instructors, and to the point of authority people, yeah. like police, mm -hmm. judges, examiners. Yeah. Some have pet peeves. My pet peeve is probably the distance from the left. And if people don't keep roughly one meter from the left, I start getting very worried. One, they're going to drive into an oncoming vehicle. Mm -hmm. Or two, they're too close to the pavement we'll and they'll hit the, the pavement. Yeah. So you have to be almost robotic or have plenty of perfect practice makes perfect. Okay. Practice does not make perfect. So let's say that Stig taught you to drive around the bend in the middle of the road and you practice that a million times and you've practiced that and you think you're perfect now. Well, you're not perfect. Yeah. Practice makes perfect. Yeah, that's true. Okay, moving on to number seven. Uh, so slow down as you enter into a yeah, blind bend, yeah. banishing point. No, you, I know that and I try to do it all the time, but I did not succeed this time, obviously. So I was in the middle of the road. <laughs> Okay, okay. Uh, number seven. This is a dangerous driver fault. Okay, so those two, number six and eleven, for I only put it as driver faults. They weren't okay. major faults. All okay, because right. no I one think was I there. Know this one. <laughs> Go on then. Tell me about. Is number it the seven. one in the when I turned right? Yeah. Yeah, and I was patiently waiting yeah. for a long time. Yeah, you were doing Looking good. right, left, right. Yeah. Waiting for a safe gap. Yeah. But then. It took a bit too long and like maybe I got, actually I got impatient and I tried to yeah. just, because I saw after the white car, it's still a lot of cars after it. So I said, if I press the accelerator a little bit, I can still make it. But I don't think I made him slow down, did I? There's a, there's a point of debate, isn't it? You see, if I, if I make him slow down, then it's a serious fault. Correct, yes. If I safely make it, they mm. will still count it as a serious, serious fault. Well, how close was the vehicle to you when I put my hand up to say thank you? Because we were still in the path of the vehicle. That's why I was encouraging them to keep distance. Like, yeah, thank yeah, you very much. Yeah, sorry, yeah, yeah, sorry, yeah, I'm sorry. I saw that, yeah. So, okay, so where were they when I was putting my hand up? Have a look quite close, the quite close. See that silver car? Yeah. Maybe somewhere there? And they're braking at that point as well. If they were not, and you were still in the road, probably clip the back of your vehicle and spin you. Yeah, I should have kept waiting patiently. The <laughs> best, easiest way, and again, this is something that I struggled with immensely. Yeah. I'm at a junction. I feel like there's pressure on me from everybody. 
this weirdo sitting next to me, me, the people behind me that might start beeping their horn, yeah. but they can't see what I can what see. Can so see. Yeah, exactly. wait, be patient. Yeah. You don't know what's happening. So ignore people that might be beeping because okay. they do not know what's going on. Yeah. They're just getting impatient. Yeah. Forget about it. Take a responsibility to check the traffic, which you're doing, and then the best way to sum it up, if you can read walk my out. writing. Yeah, if you can walk out, you can drive out. <sighs> yeah, yeah. Right, now, when someone... It depends on how you walk. <laughs> it does, doesn't it? I don't know if you've yeah, ever because seen... Because in there, yeah. may, I can walk there easily, uh, without even making them slow down. Right. But you, would you, you know you've got kids, you kind of mentioned you'd be looking after the kids. Oh, with my kids, right, <laughs> that's so a different story. You're walking them to school. Yeah. You've yeah. done that before, yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you've held their hands and yeah. walked out. I wouldn't. Road. I wouldn't. I wouldn't. So Stephanie said with a broken leg. Because yeah. so Stephanie was I like, heard yeah, I'd vi- walk out. Yeah. yeah, in a video, actually, I heard to imagine yourself carrying two heavy bags. Would you go like you are struggling with two heavy shopping bags? Yeah, I would do. Yeah, it. you're always if you're on your own and you, yeah, you shouldn't count it like that. You should think of it like you are struggling with something and you need to walk out. Would you drive out? So, yeah, yeah, I wouldn't. I wouldn't have walked out with my two kids there. Yeah, so I'm just using something that's familiar to you, so you relate to it. Yeah, better, yeah, you know? of course. Yeah. So that will really help. When somebody said that to me, that light bulb just went on, and my problem was solved. Solved. With such forever. a simple. Yeah fix yeah okay moving on so yeah that vehicle did have to slow down a bit okay moving on to number eight why am i finding this so hard uh this one is under position for normal stops so this was where you reminded me of the traffic fault the one i stopped i stopped a bit too far so we came out of the car park oh good emergency stop by the way well done good tell me show me tell me questions perfect okay Okay. so we came out of the car park after doing our controlled stop which it's officially called although people do still refer to it as emergency stop um and then we for some reason we turned left. The sat never turned you to turn left and then follow the road, which you did notice because you followed the road after. Mm-hmm. But you went out around the vehicles in the left lane. I'm kind of glad in a way you did that because otherwise you were going to get a serious fault for stopping on the yellow box, which was there. Okay. Okay, so you didn't do that. So you, you missed that serious fault. <laughs> right. You went around the cars, yeah? Do you remember? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. Into the right. I remember right. all of the... Um, Look you want the, the honest? You, you want everybody. the honest? Yeah, of honest. course. I thought they were parked cars. Thank you. I thought yeah. you thought they were parked cars yeah. as well. Okay. Especially because the other one, it was no lights on it on the back, like breaking lights or anything. So I thought, seriously, I'm too close to the curb as well. Mm-hmm. I know it's a very tight road anyway, but they were too close to the. I thought they were parked cars. I just yeah. that's why I went around yesterday. I thought one of the cars waiting in traffic was parked. It yeah. was very close, no lights on. You know, there's some clues there that it might be parked. Yeah. It wasn't. Yeah. And I thought it, it was parked. Yeah. So it's all right if you think it's parked. Yeah, but if I if I if I thought it if I thought it well, I would have seen the other one yeah, like on the left good. coming. If it was parked car, he wouldn't yeah. be Thank coming you. to so, the left. So well done. I should have thought about that. <clears throat> what the dvsa say about what you've just described is you act on the information you've seen now okay. you've just mentioned more information because you're talking about the other vehicles yeah. are slowing down stopping behind that car kind of yeah. so they're probably in motion they're in a queue of traffic yeah, yeah exactly yeah so that information extra information can help you make a more informed decision yeah so the yeah. more bits of information we have the better we can act on it or yeah. make a decision and then yeah. act on at it. the time i did not think about that car so uh so you went round it okay um and then you were in a right only lane so you got a serious driver fault because you pressed up so close to that car in front if he rolled back literally, yeah because I, I did not have any space it was too tight so there's more reason there's more information isn't there yeah, so, so you're watch... seeing this information. There's no space. It's too tight. Just so stay where you, where I am. 
<laughs> weird, isn't it? You feel like you've got to... Oh, but yeah, no, exactly, you, yeah. You want to be in a safe place, a safety bubble around the car, and the bubble's yeah. pop, getting popped, isn't it? Yeah, because if, if they have moved, the other cars would move as well. So, Or maybe because they know I'm turning right, if left, they will let me pass, and then they will follow me. The best the thing about this situation, because it's never identical situations, yeah, but you yeah. will hopefully see, or you will actually, I'm confident in saying this, you will see a similar situation like that again at some point. Yeah. Okay, I hope it's not on my test day. Yeah, well, if it it's is... Bit, so I need to stay where... Because you might come out of that car park and you might turn left and follow the road ahead. That's the test yeah. room. That's exactly like the examiner would okay. ask you to do. So I should stay on my left. So if you come out that car park and you see vehicles that you think are parked I'll stop you look, though. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Gonna... and wait until they actually give me way if, they are, if, if the cars are there if that know. never happened to you and we sat here and talked about it and described that situation would it make any sense no, no. but when you see it and do it and experience it yeah. so for people sometimes people I'm digressing a little bit here but I think this is good information if people feel like on their lessons because some people do they feel like they wasted the money they wasted the time they don't enjoy their lessons yeah. it gets bad okay mm -hmm. but it's all experience. It might not be the nicest environment or experience, but it's still experience. Yeah. Now, you know, we might have bad situations, good experiences, whatever, but we do learn from both. Yeah, yeah, you know? of course. So yeah. it's, it's all... my first time on that uh, car park anyway, so yeah, it's my good first that... time in that car park as yeah. well. Uh, is it? Yeah. I've never been in yeah, there Yeah, because on your videos, that. I'm used to the other car See? park, the, the, the swimming pool one. So everybody... Yeah, so I was like saying, oh, maybe he would take me there. So I learned how to go through, like... At the moment, the, yeah. I can't take you there. Yeah. They're using it for COVID testing. So we can't oh, go really? There, yeah. Okay. All right. All right. Yeah, but that situation is a bit. Yeah, so, yeah, I need so to remember stopped, that. Um, yeah. And then the next driver thought there, yes, you stopped too close to that car. So, number. Uh, so, so number where eight. I stopped, sorry to cut you, where yeah. I stopped is, is right only. Yes. So then yeah. this is the next driver thought. You stopped in a right only lane yeah. Yeah. and went straight. So yeah. that's for road markings. So yeah. that would be number road markings. Response to road markings number nine. Okay. So number eight, you've got way too close to stopping to that vehicle. If it rolls back or if it stops, it breaks yeah. down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, it was like too tight anyway. Yeah. And then you might not have seen the road marking because everything's quite restricted and blocked, but you stopped on top of right and it went straight. So that's a serious for the road markings. Okay, moving into... Is that serious as well? It is, yes, because yeah. if we disobey road markings or signs, like no entry signs... Even though or, you don't see it, they're not visible. Uh, I'm trying to think of the best way to answer this question. Um, is there a right-only arrow there? You're going to trust be. me. It yeah. must be. Yeah, of course there I trust. Okay. Yeah, there so, is. But it so wasn't visible. So. Now you're in court pleading your case, and they're going to say, right, show me the photo of the road marking. We'll make a decision. Yeah, they will show them the marking without... Remember, everybody's what... different, so yeah. you can see how I'm being quite political with my <laughs> yeah, answer. I know, I know, yeah. But it's, yeah. It's... Yeah, so yeah. I think right only arrow there, and we because went if, straight, so... If they will, if they, I think, if they will mark that one as a serious, mm -hmm. it should be a rule that the right is always goes right only. So people will know, even though there is a car there, you know the right goes only right. So I wouldn't have gone there if I if it was like a rule all the time. But if there is exceptions, then you can't like you know you can't tell people off when they you know when they use it when they don't see it when it's not visible. That's what I think. I'm gonna read you a paragraph here. If you consider that your test was not appropriately conducted. In accordance with the regulations, the relevant regulations, sorry, you may apply to the magistrate's court acting on the petty sessions area. Okay. <laughs> I never in read which, this before. In which, uh, you in which you reside. In Scotland, blah, 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 blah. Okay. There's Road Act here, Section blah, blah, blah. All right, okay. and then you can argue your case there. So, yeah, go for it. I'll <laughs> yeah. leave that in your no, hands. I will not, I will not, I will okay. not. But it just, that's what I thought. 
Moving on, uh, last one here, because we mentioned 11 already. Uh -huh. Number 10, and this is the last one. This was the signal uh, timed. It was, yeah. it was too early, yeah. um, you know, so just make sure you signal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I say good. five car lengths. I've yeah. been taught six to ten or something, five to ten. But sometimes five sometimes works. can be a bit less if there is a road on the... Five car lengths so, or what? Yeah, sometimes it could be less than five car lengths because there is... Possibly. Like sometimes a petrol station or yeah. maybe... A driveway yeah, or, so or a small road. The or something. way that the examiners usually look at signals is if it benefits. So how dangerous might it be if it isn't benefiting someone? Like you might okay. signal and then someone's coming out of a petrol station, they think you're going to go in, but you drive yeah, past. Yeah, yeah. It depends how close they are. Usually, from what I've been trained, if the roads are less than five car lengths in between, like you're describing, mm -hmm. you signal five car lengths. Okay. Slowly drive past the first one because you're slowing down anyways. Okay. You can watch that guy, but you need to signal because usually there's only a car length or two in between. Okay. And if we wait until we pass the first one, it then be... signal, okay. it might not benefit other road users. Okay. So for that reason, what do I, that totally confused me there. Um, so if you wait until it's too late to signal, it wouldn't benefit other road users. That's what I was saying. Okay. And the DVSA look at the way that your signal will benefit other road users. So okay. if we signal very last minute and then turn, it's not of any benefit, is it? So yeah, yeah, signal yeah. five car lengths away. Okay. And then you'll always be okay, regardless of there being a side road. From what I've been trained, All that's right. the way to do it. Okay. Because it's kind of dangerous if we don't, you know, because yeah, if you yeah, suddenly you signal and turn. Yeah. Yeah. All right. And that concludes uh, Miriam's driving test. And that's the full yeah. debrief in a lot of detail with some digressed points. But hopefully that benefited anybody that is watching. All the cameras are dying because we talk too much. <laughs> but that's good. Hopefully it gave you some value. If it did, okay. leave a thumbs up. An extra special thank you to Miriam. Thank you to you, Scott. Thank I you. have been Scott, and thank stay you. safe, stay tuned, and we'll see you next time. Yeah.